my name's Mitchell Lopez. Um, I'm 26 years old. I was an ex-professional soccer player, and now I started doing a bunch of different things like modeling, um, coaching, and I started getting into just different projects uh, here in my community. Um, I'm from South Florida, and, and yeah, man. Sure, sure. And I noticed the model as aspect, and I was going to ask you, like, how is it from the male side of modeling? That that was one of the first things that I wanted to talk to you about as well. Because I know we talked about those, you know, specific questions, but, you know, we can always take a, a turn. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, uh, it's been about a year where I've been working alongside both male and female models. And, I mean, for me, it's been pretty natural doing the transition from the world of sports to, to modeling to photography and yeah yeah it's it's been pretty seamless man it hasn't hasn't been uh hasn't been too bad and who are the people around you like your team or photographers that you can kind of give credit to that have been there for you do you have a a specific team that are kind of your go-to group of uh team or are you just kind of uh moving around so with soccer and photography or with modeling, it's yeah. it's pretty different. Uh, with the world of soccer, like you, I, I had an agent, I had a team that I could count on for the time that I had a contract. And with yeah. modeling, it doesn't seem that way. It seems like I I have maybe one or two modeling agencies, but it's almost like you're constantly uh, reinventing yourself, and you're constantly meeting other photographers, other models, and and looking at other projects yeah so it's a little different in that aspect that the support system kind of has uh more to do with like the ground level like other models supporting each other mm -hmm. and whereas in soccer usually you would have more of a support uh, that's what i feel so far yeah and, and talk a little bit about that sport aspect of your life like what was your inspiration was it you know, your family, your friends, was it a specific athlete that kind of influenced you? Like, how did that all come to be? Yeah, no. Uh, so for me, I think there was uh there was an episode that I remember when I was maybe in third grade where mm -hmm. a kid uh, asked, a kid basically told me that Colombia was better than Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, my family was Brazilian. And um, I took that home with me in soccer. He said Colombia was better than Brazil in soccer, and I, I took that home with me. And I, I asked a cousin who was a neighbor at the time, super <laughs> passionate about soccer. And, yeah. And, um, he basically like he just said it straight. He started telling me the history of soccer, and like before that, I hadn't even thought about soccer. It wasn't even a thing in my universe. But well, what's what's if if you don't mind me asking, what mm -hmm. is the history of soccer? Well, to what extent? I mean, it was it, it started out in uh, in England. I want to say it predates uh, 1900, so around 1890 or so. It starts becoming like a federation. Uh, uh, FA is a federation of or federated association of soccer, and yeah. um, and then there's a governing body. And the World Cups don't really start till the 1930s. And since then, we've had World Cups every four years, and then it becomes like uh, this, man, this like global sport, and then it takes over. It becomes the most, you know, the, the, the most important one, and um, it's really only ever stopped because of the world, uh, because of the World War. Mm -hmm. uh, the, second, the, the Second World War made uh, made the 19, 1942 and nineteen forty six World Cups. Uh, gets skipped, so I went 38, and then I went right to to 50. But every four years, 54, 58, etc. Um, and basically, uh, Brazil was the first team to win the World Cup three times because that's what the that's what the like specification was for it to to stay with the country. Mm, uh, it was very interesting. It was, yeah, it was called the Jules Rimet Cup, which is this French, uh, this French guy that uh, I guess he was the organizer of FIFA. And Uruguay had won it twice, and then Italy won it twice. But the 
in the specification was the first team to win it three times would stay with the trophy. And so Brazil ended up winning the third time in the set in 1970. And then since then, the trophy itself changed because Brazil stayed with the the uh, original trophy. And, um, and did you go back to school and school the kid? <laughs> well, I, what I did was, which I think was perhaps better on my part, I just dedicated myself to it. And so since the third grade, basically up until up until about last November, that's a good, you know, 15, 16 years of my life. I've just, I've just become obsessed with the sport. I, I would play, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, basically from the time I was nine years old. Wow. I, I have a little bit of experience soccer wise. I actually belong to a, a German club. Uh, we awesome. have about 16 clubs throughout the United States and I'm a German folk dancer. You know, I know we haven't really gone into that, but, and at all of our clubs, we've had soccer fields, right? So after dance practice, you know, we'd all go outside and, you know, play and whether or not it was soccer or football. And I always loved going to middle school or high school. And, you know, the one opportunity that we would have to play soccer I loved it so much because it was so much more technical, you know, that I could literally, you know, all the football players, you know, they would in their mind think, you know, oh, they're great athletes. But in reality, when you're playing soccer, you know, you can literally dance around people, you know, with, yeah. with you know, technique. And, you know, I, I've really always appreciated it. And um, so now when it comes to modeling, what was your inspiration when it comes to modeling? Um, I want to say it was just um, it was just kind of pure luck. Uh, my sister is a professional model, so when I started doing soccer, she started with modeling. Uh, she's two years older than me, and uh, so it's in the genes. It, well, I guess yeah. It just it, it happened to her, and it took off, and I never thought much about it, but. Um, I basically I took her to a to a casting and it was a huge casting up in Orlando and I drove her up there and when we get to the casting they invited me inside to do it as well and yeah. and we ended up booking both of us um, at like center stage and, and when was this This was in January now. Oh wow okay so pretty recently Mhm mm mhm mm yeah. and Yep, and from then on, I mean, that's really where the whole inspiration even for the Instagram came about. I, I've never, I've never really big, been big on social media, so yeah. So that was something that, that was um, an idea to kind of get more work and to do more networking, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, and that's you know exactly what this is, and yeah. I, you know, I at least locally, I kind of specialized in this type of scenario where and this is your first interview correct no no, no oh really because yeah, you do no. sound seasoned so like mm -hmm. i so tell me a little bit about that what experience have you had with uh media uh i want to say pretty early on i mean when i signed my first professional contract well even before that i played three years in uruguay um, so I was 16 and I came back when I was 19 and I made it to, uh, yeah, one of the best, well, I made it to the, to the best soccer academy of Uruguay and there, Sweet. the kids had, a, I mean, they had traveled the world. There were kids that were on the national team. So I was, I think it was at that point where I started having to like be coached on like what it meant to, um, express yourself within a professional setting and like knowing how to be. Uh, representing your your team in a way that uh, you're not like defaming anybody, and you're still like maintaining a certain standard when you go to speak. Things sure, like that. yeah, yeah, and I and I really admire that because, like I said, uh, I would probably say you're in the one percent that a lot of other, whether or not they're artists or you know, now that I'm kind of expanding my brand, you know, there's a lot of hand holding. You know, mm -hmm. you know, keep yeah, your, you know, keep your mouth, you know, uh, right. a fist away from the mic or, you know, right. look me in the eyes or, you know, now, obviously, since it is audio based, it's a little bit different. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
So as far as, you know, now recently getting into modeling, what are those short-term goals? And then we can, Mm -hmm. you know, eventually get into the long term. Hmm. That's, that's an interesting question. Short term, I think, uh, what I care about is, um, networking, networking yeah. exposure and, and, and experience, uh, starting to work with, uh, photographers and projects that I care about and I respect. Yeah. Because in a perfect world, you know, I'm building a studio myself. I don't know if you were able to notice that. And, um, mm-hmm. I have had a significant amount of experience with photography and, you know, cool. so that, you know, maybe one day and, uh, sure. we're building a, a green screen cyclorama and we'll also have a white and a black wall. And, um, you know, so that's definitely my long term plan. Okay. Um, so what would you say is a seemingly unattainable dream? You know, what would be something that in two years, in five years, in 10 years, you know, where would you like to be seemingly unattainable? You know, a dream. Um, man, I think you got the wrong guy. If, because for me, there isn't really much that's unattainable. I like love I, that. Yeah. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people go that direction. I love that. Well, just, just because, uh, I think if you if you can't even imagine yourself doing it, like what hope do you have for reality? Nice. Um, so I, I, I mean, I don't look to limit myself in reality. Why would I do that in in my imagination? You know. So I think to kind of answer your question, two to five years. Um, I spent a lot of my career uh, moving around, so most of it quite unstable so i'd like to have some kind of route to the point where i feel like i have become more stable whether that's um here in south florida or it's in europe where i've been living the last six years which i i love um so for me something along those lines would be would be a uh i think it would be progress in the direction i want to go could you see yourself as like an ESPN commentator or, you know, anything in the sports world or what, what kind of, uh, area would, do you see yourself? Um, no, not, not really. No, not, not, uh, not in the commentating section. I do a lot of work now with like, uh, with the youth, uh, I coach at high school. I coach, uh, younger boys, younger girls. And for me, my career has always been about like the psychology behind it. Like, mm. and talk talk I've a little been, bit about that. How how did you begin to give back? And that that's pretty important. Uh-huh. Um. Why? Well, so football, soccer has always been an emotional uh, journey for me. It's always been something that's like quite uh, heavy in the sense that like I've dedicated my life to it it's, it was an obsession of sorts and um when i started doing some coaching just on the side um i realized early on that it it wasn't going to be that easy because of the emotional attachment i had to it so i had to stop um it wasn't until i got a gig coaching women in sweden that mm. i an older women like it was a semi-professional team that um they trained three times a week. They, it was just a perfect spot. You know, they needed, they needed someone that was, that knew what they were doing. And I needed, I needed to help out the club that I had a contract with. And so it was just a perfect fit. And, um, working with them, I was able to be a a lot more objective Mm -hmm. and, and it solidified what many of my friends knew, but I, I didn't, which was that at some point I would go into coaching um and whether that's you know being the head coach or whether that's being like the uh i don't know like a team psychologist something like that but something dealing with like how to um work around the negative and positive emotions all that 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 has to do with like competition and yeah yeah and so that 
that started really about a year ago where I, I started getting really comfortable or about a year and a half ago where I started really getting really comfortable with uh, with coaching and being responsible for all of these players and the dynamics within a group. Yeah, and I'm loving this opportunity because I'm learning a side of, you know, coaching and sports that I had never even really calculated before that mm. there, you know, that's a huge job, you know, to be able to maintain all yeah. of those different relationships and, you know, mm -hmm. probably what those people are specifically dealing with in their life and how that applies right. to the game. And right. uh, that's, that's, that's pretty interesting for sure. Um, yeah. Now, where can people find you? Uh, well, online, they would find me on the, the Instagram, Mitchell M. Lopez. Um, and, I guess in person you would you would have a harder time doing that because I'm much <laughs> much more of an introvert. So I yeah uh, yeah. But, I've always I've uh, always considered myself an introvert trapped in an extrovert's body. Yeah, yeah. Well, they call that an ambivert. An ambivert. Well, I learned uh, two things tonight <laughs> or this yeah. afternoon. That you know, society. You know, we're kind of uh, we have to be extroverted. You know that it's a uh, an ambivert. That's awesome. How do you? How do you, man? I'm gonna I'm gonna text you about that. Sure. But, uh, yeah. That's really interesting. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. You know, we'll yeah. definitely you know do this again. The more that you you know get into modeling, and I'm definitely interested to to watch and follow, and I hope everybody is to see your progress and if uh, anybody yeah. hasn't you know please subscribe on the youtube i'll be leaving all of his links down in the description and i just want to you know thank you for coming on sir thank you very much tony and uh anytime all right cool thanks for okay all right we'll talk <laughs>